This might be my best idea ever. This might be my best one. Fallon Taylor, little lady with a great challenge in front of her. This is Flo, baby Flo. <laughs> she went to world championship. And the winner's circle for that cowgirl. And the victory lap. Ellen Taylor will win. She's riding a new horse, a young horse, out of a champion flow. She has absolutely been unstoppable. What's up, Flomies? Welcome back to my channel. Yes, I do have my trusty ranch dressing cup and handle because girl, a girl needs to be hydrated right now. Like, I don't know what Texas is cooking, but in my brain, the brownies are done. It is so hot. It is so humid. When you feel the sweat go down your back, it's just like, okay, we're done here. I feel like I'm gonna just like completely come apart when I go into cold and get chills. Like, it's hot. Um, we are very grateful to no longer be underwater. I think that was the last rain. We, we were griping about rain. We griped about the polar vortex. Like, just Texans have had a lot to say about weather this year, and I apologize, but we've been through it. So it's a normal Texas summer day here, and it is time to get on the road for the summer run. Now, my summer run is not a traditional one. Um, I go to a lot of different rodeos that a lot of girls don't go to right now. I have a lot of goals that I want to meet, and I've given myself until July 4th to meet them. I'm already a third of the way there toward the goal that I want to hit for myself for this year. So... Why don't we just make this happen in 17 days? I'm gonna to try to like really put myself under pressure. I tend to do really well that way. Um, so I'm under pressure, Cody's under pressure, and we have 17 days to get this done. I have such a big surprise coming up later um, for all of you guys to, sh to show you about my journey on the rodeo road and all of those amazing things way down the road that I will show you, but this time crunch is simply to give myself a deadline. Um, I feel like just like anybody, I can't remember the law it is, basically you grow to the size of the task, the, the amount of minutes that you're given to do a task. So like if you're given you know, six weeks to study for an exam, it takes you six weeks. If you're given six minutes, you take six minutes and you don't do any better either way. In fact, most people that cram for an exam actually do do better. So I'm kind of doing that to myself. Of like you have 17 days, pass or fail, let's see how it happens. I'm gonna cover a lot of territory in these 17 days, so make sure that you guys are subscribed, ding that notification bell, it's about to get crazy. Let me show you the way that we prepare for the summer run. Cody, I think we both need the one of your head stall. I think so too. Okay, that's gonna be our commitment. Okay, so we have five minutes at home. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> we have very little time at home. Um, so I, and we just shot the tactical collection. So that was our big thing for today. Um, so we are switching out, not all of our stuff. We're going to continue to keep the Del Rio saddle pad. Cause I have a Del Rio saddle and the leopard just as a neutral. Cause everybody knows leopards a neutral. And I'm trying to commit to, um, which set to put on hush money's head stall. I know a lot of people are going to say purple. I might go with Dakota cause I wear so much turquoise, but then we have a one ear that's in for this collection too. Anyway, I think Cody and I both need the one ear just for fun, um, but I am going to put this new head stall on. Jesse crushed it. Again, there are saddle pads, spur straps, wither straps, the whole thing. Also, I just wanna say, I'm not trying to personally attack anyone, but if you have trashed your tactical sets, I need to come live with you for a minute because I personally can like, I can ruin anything. Like I can, I can literally like trash anything. But these have been my saddle pads and we bought our truck new and the truck now has 89,000 miles on it. So I know exactly how many miles that the saddle pads have on them. <laughs> and they have 89,000 miles on them. All these rodeos, rain, shine, the whole thing. And they look absolutely amazing. Normal wear and tear where the cinch goes. Um, and our head stalls literally look brand new. You can see that brand new and they travel 90,000 miles a year. So I'm just saying, I'm so proud of this collection. I'm even more proud of the durability of everything. Um, 
because it just like it just continues to look good when i put these head stalls that are like my old head stalls in the barn um i'm gonna be able to take them out later and use them again as if they're brand new because they look fantastic like there's hush monies that i just threw on the ground that's hush money's head stall it's been her head stall all year and it looks fantastic so i'm really excited also if you have a bit that you use permanently like i need to do this but we're in a hurry today so i'll do this on the road but we take loctite with us if you have a bit that you know like that's your bit that's the bit you're going to use forever and ever on that head stall put some loctite inside of your screw um, so that it is the safest it can possibly be. There is no Chicago screw that won't come undone. Like that's just the nature of the beast. Cause we're traveling in rigs that vibrate and putting them on horses that sweat and move. So having those like secured on is such a fantastic idea. And we do it to like everything conchos on the saddle, conchos on our breast collar. Um, and those are easy to do because you don't have to worry about changing these out. The head stall, you've got to kind of commit to what bit you're going to put on what head stall a little bit more because you're not going to get it off very easily. But there's Hush Money's with my very expensive hay twine. Um, you know, when it falls off, I will change it, but it looks perfect. And now she's got two setups. I bought the same slow twist mouthpiece. Like I bought 10 of them so I could put all the head stalls on it. I've got, um, I've got a slow twist Santa Fe. Now I've got a slow twist Dakota and the one ear teal, teal serape and then later on i will put these on also this has been flowbots bridle and you can see it looks absolutely brand new so i'm really really proud of the collection i'm even more proud of the durability because y'all it looks sick so i'm gonna load up the 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 old tack into the tack room new tack into the trailer and show you guys what it looks like okay so it's a different day um we got really hot it is a hundred and something degrees in texas and it is literally 100 degrees in the shade so we are burning up your girl is glowing um we got it all done and by we i mean jesse did an amazing job shooting all the merch cody did an amazing job shooting all the um video promo material and then here i am i'm gonna take you on a tour so this is my favorite part this is my favorite part eee, i'm so excited so we have neon lights collection teal serape collection Dakota and Hayes. I was confused, like maybe I'm not such like a red person and Hush Money looks great in red by the way. So when I saw Hayes, I was like, why is that my favorite? So that was confusing for me because I'm like, that would have not been like my go-to, but we did make, we listened to you guys. So we did do a one ear collection that has no fringe and that is the teal serape. So if you're a no fringe one ear kind of person, that is the move. Um, we also, all the other ones do have fringe. I've got Hush Money's bridal set up on Dakota right now. And then the Dakota breast collar is right here with the turquoise buck stitching and the white fringe. We have the haze with chocolate bucks, whip stitching, sorry, whip stitching and mint fringe. And then the neon lights with the black whip stitching and purple fringe and i feel like our fringe even got a little bit better quality this time around which i thought our fringe was really good but it's gotten even better so i'm really really excited also this is after a season and a half of rodeo this is what my head stall looks like this is lolo's head stall um, i took hush money's head stall off already which you saw and put it on the teal serape and the dakota because me and Cody are going to switch back and forth, but I'm really excited for you guys to see the tactical collection. Check out the tactical Instagram, make sure and give them a follow. Maybe I'm even going to do a giveaway from here as well, um, for a tax set. And when you see in the stories, there is a swipe up to get notified. You want to get on that list. So you're the first one to get all of the information. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. It takes a lot of hard work to make this tax show up. So I'm really, really excited about it. It's time to get on the rodeo road for the summer. I've given myself 17 days to reach my goal. 17 days. The good news is I'm leaving the home. I'm leaving home a third of the way there. So I just have two thirds of the way to actually get this done. And I think I can do it. So hopefully you think I can do it too. Cause I feel like all the energy from home just makes it even better, but I'm going to show you some upgrades that I made. I feel like this summer is exponentially hotter um, at the certain places that we've gone. I actually downloaded an app called road tripper. 
um, that I use on my phone. It's really, really cool. And it can show you like exactly where I'm going. I don't know if you can see this, but um, it looks like I gave a small child an Etch-A-Sketch and made myself a routine, but that's how Rodeo works. So everything is mapped out. For this trip, I'm going 6,156 miles. If you wanted to know from right here, it's about 7,200 miles to Afghanistan, about 7,400 miles to China from here. And I'm going 6,100 miles, just to put that all in perspective. Um, so I'm gonna show you some upgrades that I made for the rig for the summer. Okay, so I've had fans in every trailer um, built in and they always seem to either break or something goes really wrong. And I've had back box fans for stalls. The problem is the extension cords or horses chewing through them becomes a fire hazard. Um, I'm not against having the extension cord, but if I can prevent it, I'm going to. Um, and also the box fans, you have to buy them new every season. So that gets really expensive. So I spent a lot more money and got these Ryobi fans and I'll turn them on for you. It's like blasty blast of air and they hang right on here. The battery lasts for four hours. And then I have a charger that I'll show you in the back of the truck that is charging three batteries while I'm going down the road. I'm gonna set an alarm for these for four hours. That way I can pull over and switch out the batteries. Then when I get to the stalls, regardless if they have extension cords or not, I can jump on a ladder, hang these really up high just like this and have a fan all the time, no matter where I go. So I think these were a good investment, but I'll keep you posted. So one other thing that I can do in the trailer, as long as I know the temperature in here, which it is way cooler here than outside because of the shade and the ventilation, even without the fans on, especially when we're moving down the road, it's gonna create a lot of air. So it's gonna be even easier on those fans. But one thing that I can do, as long as I know the temperature, is I can lay ice down underneath my horses. So one thing that I really wanna do is understand what temperature it is in this trailer to make sure that I'm hauling in a safe temperature. Also, we're gonna do all of our driving very, very, very early in the morning. That's why I get up at four and 5 a.m. so I can get the bulk of my day driving done before the sun is in the middle of the sky. I think it's really important, it's easier on your rig, your tires, and your animals to get up really, really early. If you're not an early riser, get over that because it's hard on everybody and everything to travel in the heat of the day. So you can lay ice down in here and as it melts, it will make it about, I would say 10 to 15 degrees cooler, but if it can break hundred, that would be amazing. So how am I gonna keep track of the temperature inside here? Let's go check it out. Okay, so we're in the front stall where I keep all of my hay. I did pack hay in here like crazy, so it's packed to the ceiling. Um, but I have put a thermostat just right here or a, a thermometer where I can see exactly what temperature it is right here. You can see that it's 104 degrees right now. Um, and you can see our min and our max. Um, it's been 109. It was 87, so that's kind of our high and low for the day. So this is us without moving. Um, so you can see it's very obvious that you don't wanna keep your rig sitting still for a super long time. We don't stop and eat restaurant lunches because I don't want my horses sitting in 104 degrees, even if it is shady. Um, so I'm gonna keep that here and with every, every fuel stop, every pee stop, um, we are gonna check that out and make sure to adjust as needed. We also are going to water every single stop. Normally we wait every other stop and give them water because they don't drink a ton when it's 65 degrees outside. But this weather shift is crazy. So we're gonna make sure that we do our very best to keep these horses watered. Also, how great did this fit right over um, this whole like thing? We've reinforced it with some ties, but it looks really good. So we learned a really important trick and that is when it's really late at night, you do not wanna lug a big giant bag into a hotel. So we have these itty bitty bags. This is Cody's, this is mine. We've got Poppy trained, so he's not here yet, but we'll have his bag. He's been lugging a really huge bag too. We put our, Cody's got a smaller one, but she's got a duffel up here. I've got this bag, which is just like a quarter of the way full for clothes for 17 days. And we keep about three days in our luggage. So we only have to haul in what we need. Then we switch it out. Inside of my bag is a laundry bag and that will hang right here. And then every night we can put our dirty clothes into the laundry bag and then keep our bag with just what we need in it for every single day. So when I bought this trailer, I had envisioned the wardrobe, which is right where Cody is sitting. I'd envisioned it on this back wall. So there'd be a bar here and a bar here, but that we ended up putting in power for our iceless cooler. So these just run off this power or solar and they're iceless. So we have our prepped meals in here. Um, and we put them all down in here so that we don't have to continue to buy ice. So when we lived in this trailer for a little while on the road, 
I realized that we need the clothes over here so it's not just walking into this kind of mess of stuff. Cody's is on top, mine is on bottom. Cody, I should have put yours on the bottom. It's okay. I got a long reach, I could have gone up here. <laughs> and then we put all of our boots and mud boots and things over here. And then we have some hanging space. This is stuff that we don't necessarily need right now, but we keep it up here in case we need to haul some stuff inside. In here is extra kitchen supplies, so Cody cannot drink iced tea without some lemon. So we've got some lemon juice. Um, I have just cold brew iced tea. And then we have like all of our seasonings for all of our food and we have man sports. So we have gut joy in here. We have two different things of brain bridge so we don't run out. And then we have the new tactical belts that are in here that we are just waiting so patiently um, to get launched and we are gonna rock those too. So just a few things over here to keep us steady on the road, but you don't need just a ton of stuff. I know that we've like kind of gone excessive, but you know, I do own the place. So I've got every shirt, but we wear them, you know, so often these shirts are absolutely amazing and machine washable. So we just chuck them in a bag then we're ready to go if we need to. So they're so easy to travel with. We don't have to worry about them getting messed up or needing a dry cleaners. So we won't be traveling with our dogs this trip. It's just too hot. Um, you know, if the truck were to turn off or if the dogs were not able to be in the hotel room while we were at a rodeo and it's this hot, we just don't find it fair. Um, so the dogs are gonna stay home. Alex is having a field day right now. He's having the greatest day of his life because you know, dogs are home. So he's very, very excited about that. Um, but we just, it's just too hard. And if your truck turns off, you have it turned on, you go inside, you need to eat dinner or something and God forbid that truck were to turn off. I would not know what to do with myself. So don't leave dogs in vehicles especially in the summer. So we are not doing that this time. We typically are able to leave them in the hotel room where it's 70 degrees, 68 degrees all the time, and then we can go pick them up. But this schedule is 6,000 miles in 17 days, which does not allow for a lot of break time. Our typical average day is gonna be 16 hours per day for 17 days. Um, yeah, pray for us. <laughs> Okay, so the new fans, besides this one, I need to fix, we need to retie this one because I've got it hooked up on the hay bag instead of our fancy dancy little things. But dad just lowered his down, check this out. Because it's tied on correctly. And she's still working, yeah. four hours in. She's still cooking. Okay. Uh, 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 okay. We're reloaded. Okay, Let's see how difficult this is. Okay. Okay. This might be my best idea ever. This might be my best one. feeling extra super duper about this. How long until somebody steals my batteries off my fan? Because <laughs> these batteries are like a little pricey. We'll make sure yeah. we'll take them off. Yeah. This was a win. Okay, we made it to Big Spring. Now it is time to pick out something to wear, tack up these horses, and have an amazing run. Whoa! It's that new new. Okay, I'm first on Hush Money. It's a new arena, so let's see how it goes. Seven times this place is lady to run her national finals. Champion of the world. 
one in 2014. She's a mom, she's a cowgirl. Okay, insert that that TikTok sound of like oh it was no. a, <laughs> oh no or the we like 19 different sounds could happen here. Like what in a cousin that could happen or the uh the like it was a dumpster fire inside of a train wreck yeah. inside of a that's what happened let me just tell you how barrel racing goes one it's ancient history if you haven't heard my podcast on the poppyism advice that it's ancient history it's already over don't dwell on it which is easier said than done so i try to train myself to not analyze the losses um as much especially if it's just kind of a freak thing if it's something i can keep repetitively doing i need to analyze that but this is something that's never happened so i ran up to this big scary white wall the barrels or 15 feet off the fence and I didn't drive hard enough and Hush Money has not seen a wall like that so she sucked back when she did I decided to try to pull a barrel up when I did I was hanging on the side of her and she was like girl what are you doing and then I ran over to the second barrel and I had her all out of position and when it rains it pours and that's just how it goes so I'm gonna min and black myself and just don't remember it go on to the next one now let's hope that Cody does a lot better than me Okay, Cody did do a whole lot better than me. Her whole goal was to really nail the angle to the first barrel, and she did. And you have to remember at 1% at a time, if you're aiming for something really great 1% at a time and incrementally, which is how you actually get to the thing that you want, you, you it's like playing whack-a-mole with your issues. So yes, her first barrel was perfect, but she drug over the second barrel. It is what it is. The third barrel was pretty good, and she made progress because that first barrel we're gonna take with us to the very next rodeo. Thank you for watching my dumpster fire. Now, if you've had a dumpster fire of a run or a day or whatever else, happens to everybody. Doesn't matter who you are. You are not exempt from a rough day, but you do have the choice to make it better and have an amazing attitude no matter what. So that's ancient history. Let's go on to the next one. It's time to get on the road to Utah. You guys, make sure you're subscribed, ding the notification bell so you're the first person to see the very next run because I got redemption coming down the pipe, so get ready. All right, you guys, don't forget to count your blessings, drink your protein, and say thank you to Jesus. See you next time. Did you love this vlog but wish you could get even more training tips and horse content to apply to your training sessions? Make sure to check out thehorseboss.com. I'm excited to be your coach.